Hey everyone, my name is David from 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. Today's video, we're going to take a look into a historic ward from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Forest Dale Chapel in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you've been watching the channel, uh, you'll know church history fascinates me, uh, especially learning the stories of individual congregations. And also, as of late, I've had a keen interest into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, especially uncovering uh, some ancestry. And I think after completing uh, the 52 Church experiment and visiting a number of churches since, uh, I've wrestled with a number of things on my own spiritual journey. Uh, because on one point, I see a lot of churches where it's so focused on the entertainment aspects of things. There's been other churches I've gone to where it's very defensive, uh, it's very on guard, and it results in a very fortified type of congregation. And I, I think online, you know, it, it's difficult because there's so many voices that are preaching what's bad or what's wrong with church, and they'll nitpick all these little things. But there's very little when it comes to finding solutions or here's an alternative that's better. And as a result, it re it's this spirit of contention and there's not enough voices that preach from a spirit of love or how to represent Jesus well. And if there are those, because they're not controversial, uh, they're not heard as much. I think that's especially true when it comes to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, I did an LDS video a number of months ago and I, I, I recall someone who made a comment that said that people see two different types of LDS churches. One is the stereotypical Mormon church where it's a cult and they do all these weird things in temples and run away. But then two, it's the actual Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. One that actually tries to live as much as Je like Jesus Christ as possible one that tries to care for your neighbor, one that invites others towards Jesus Christ and bring, bring him into your heart, but then also to bring families together. And I don't know about you, but in today's society, uh, there doesn't seem to be many institutions or organizations or churches that are standing out front at the front of the pack to represent families. And because there's just so much now where it's broken families, divorces, like, what can we do to, to bring that family unit together again in today's day and age? So what I have found is just with the depth, the history, and especially the convictions among LDS churches, um, that has really resonated for me. And as a result, I have found myself going to my local ward now for the past two to three months, uh, minus a weekend or two. So uh, with my genuine curiosity and search, uh, understanding the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, I've had to visit a number of historic wards, and one of them was the Forestdale Chapel. And this one is so distinctive because one, uh, it has this classical building that's very uncommon. It has a dome that you don't really see with too many LDS wards. And then three, uh, this actually was across the street from Brigham Young's farmhouse. So I, I talked with a number of senior members there uh, they shared a lot, so I'll kind of recap what they told to me to you. Uh, I'll share a little bit about what it looked like and sounded like inside. I'll be back in just a moment with a recap.
I touched on it a little bit ago, but that land was made famous by Brigham Young, uh, the second prophet and president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So in 1863, uh, he built his farmhouse on this 600-acre uh, farmland, and he called it Forest Farm because there was this grove of trees, and I guess he also planted a few trees himself. Uh, but looking online, it doesn't look like he actually lived there other than holding a few events. Well, here's what's interesting. Uh, after the church service, uh, I got in a conversation with some senior members. And uh, this one gentleman who grew up in the church, whose mom grew up in the church, uh, he told him as a young child that Brigham Young, the reason that he selected this spot was because there was this bubbling river underneath the ground, under basically this underground river. So what he would do is he would get meat and he would kind of get some hooks and he'd put the, the meat underneath by this river to essentially cool the meat, basically acting as refrigeration because they didn't have refrigeration back then. So Brigham Young, he died in 1877 and eventually this area was bought uh, from his estate in 1889 and the area was named Forest Dale. Forest I get because it was previously Forest Farm the Dale part, I don't know who Dale was. If you know, let me know in the comments below because I can't find anything online about where the name came from. So they started up the Forest Dale Ward in 1896 and they decided let's build our own chapel building. Well, here's where things get a little mysterious with the Meeting House murder. So the ward, they want to hold a contest to select an architect. So in 1901, they selected Peter Mortensen, and he had plans to do this three-speared building. Well, he quickly went in debt with a lumber company. I guess he was $3,800 in debt. And one night he invited uh, the, the lumber company's treasurer, his name was James Hayes, over to his house. Well, the next day Hayes went missing, and they eventually found that he was murdered in this field. So obviously Mortensen was the culprit. And he never admitted guilt, but he eventually was tried, convicted, and eventually executed uh, for the death of James Hayes. So this created a stir within the congregation because some thought Mortensen was guilty, others thought he was innocent. And I guess this even reached new, the New York Times, uh, kind of calling this one of the, the biggest murder trials uh, in, in Latter-day Saint history back then. <laughs> they decided, let's, let's try all this again. So in 1902, they held another contest for an architect, and the winner was Samuel Whitaker. And Whitaker instead proposed this circular dome. So they started building it, they completed it, and it was dedicated in 1905, uh, dedicated by the then church president, Joseph F. Smith. And one of the biggest features that it has with a circular dome is it allows natural light to come in from the top and that still exists to this day. So to give a brief recap from this visit, when I walked in, it, church was just about to start, and I was very confused where to go for the church service because walking in, they had all these different hallways and a staircase. So if, if I, when I walked in, I could go left, right, or up a staircase, it also would take me left or right. So I decided, I'll go where the music is. So I hear the, this organ pipe playing, go upstairs, and it's, it's getting louder in this one room. So I walk in the room and it's this empty classroom and the music's getting louder behind a closet. So I go behind the closet and that's where the organ is, but there's no church service there. Like, so obviously that's not it. So walk back downstairs, meet a great lady, uh, she directed me where to go, and I found my seat kind of towards the back uh, to, to get the church service started. And I, I think one thing that I was really impressed with this, this chapel, obviously, like you look up and you see the, the circular dome, you see the natural light coming down, but then also, uh, you know, the, this classic organ pipe. And again, I spoke with the senior members of the church after the service, and they mentioned that a number of the chimes and the organ pipes and all that had actually been transferred 
and they had to they had to correct themselves because the one gentleman said the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and it's like they're still struggling, kind of removing Mormon out of the vocabulary. So it's the more the Tabernacle Choir, <laughs> and uh, they were kind of mentioning that this, like they had parts of that in that organ. So there was a lot of pride from these gentlemen about that. So I don't remember a whole lot from the talks or anything from the service because this was a number of months ago. I just remember all the kids up front with the families because again, the thing I really, that is very warm and appreciative about Latter-day Saint churches is the families are together. And that may mean some kids are gonna be crying. They're gonna be restless. Some are going to walk up to the very front and, you know, no one really bats too much of an eye at it because it's all about family. After service, uh, a young gentleman who was seated up front uh, by the rostrum with a, the priesthood introduced himself. And he had heard a little bit about my story. And, you know, I, I kind of shared, you know, what I do visiting all these different churches and stuff. And he wanted to give a real quick tour of their church. So he took, he took me down several different hallways, uh, seeing all these pictures. And eventually, uh, I, I think one of his kids had to take him away. And so I just kind of got lost and just started taking all these pictures and videos of several, um, portraits that they had. And somehow I, I remember I, I, I got lost in this hallway and walked upstairs. And then I was in this, this gym, all of a sudden that I had been in earlier that from what he was touring with me. So the way that this was all organized with the hallways was just, was so confusing. Uh, but the thing that I remember most is he returned later with this portrait and it was a picture of their congregation from over a hundred years ago. And this really set the tone and, and what I remember most because this picture was like this testament of the enduring pioneer spirit for this particular congregation, all in black and white, because you see the faces of the, these men, these women, and a lot of children. And for many, I'm sure this was probably the first time they ever took a photograph in their lives. And so to see their faces, it, you just kind of wonder the hardships and the difficulties that they had been facing due to the various religious persecution directed at them, especially in, re in with regards to polygamy uh, that they were getting out of at that time, but then also just due to the very radical beliefs compared to Protestants or Catholics in the United States at that time. So it's like, like they're all standing in front of this chapel. You know, this is this is what they built, and this is why they were there, and it was just. You know, they, they made several sacrifices, they had faced so many hardships, but this was their church home, and there was a sense of pride in that picture. So, again, th this picture was just like an echo from the past, just full of grace, full of determination for that pioneer spirit. And, you know, it, there's just so many stories in every single face in that photograph you can only imagine what all 100, 200 of those people had been going through at that time. But tell you what, that's going to wrap up this video on the Forest Dale Chapel. Hope you enjoyed it. I've had a number of requests to head back out to Utah to, to do the Manti Utah Temple Open House. It's a classic pioneer temple. I want to get out there, so I'm planning to fly out soon. So I'm hoping to do a video on that soon. Uh, but if you want to help the channel, make sure to like and subscribe. Comments also help with the algorithm, so that's always appreciated as well. But until next time, hope you have a good one.